Chapter 23 Signor Giosello sat at Salvatore's bedside, chanting and wailing, as was the custom in that city when someone died. Dominic was glad he could leave the room. He had never seen anyone die before except on TV when a person died on TV. And when a person died on TV, the body didn't stay around. A hearse usually came and it was whisked away out of sight. But no one came for Salvatore. He was still lying on the bed. Dominic didn't like the wailing. It sounded too sad and scary. He wanted to get as far away from it as he could. He followed Francesco up to the loft where Antonio had hidden himself under a quilt. Father Tommaso climbed the wooden ladder after them and sank down on a rickety old chair. You must not wait for the burial, he said. The ship leaves at noon. I don't want to go without, Francesco's voice choked with a sob. I know it is hard, Francesco, Father Tommaso said gently, but you must think of yourself and your little brother. Maybe if Salvatore had been in America, there would have been a doctor and medicine to save him. In America, he wouldn't have to fill his empty stomach with cherry pits. In America, you have a chance for a better life. Besides, the padrone and his men will surely find you if you stay. With Salvatore gone, they may blame you for Tibera Renditzi's death. You must go, but do not worry. I will see that Salvatore is laid beside your mamma and papa back in Avaletto. I promise you this. I want Salvatore, Antonio sobbed from under the quilt. Salvatore is in heaven with mamma and papa now, Francesco told him. When can I go to heaven to be with them? Antonio asked, poking his head out from under the blanket. Ah, little one, such a question, friend, Father Tommaso sighed scooping up Antonio and the quilt in his big, strong arms and placing him on his lap. It is not for us to say when our time on earth is enough. This is not for us to decide. It is God who makes these decisions. But what if God makes mistakes? Antonio whispered. How do we know that he meant to take Salvatore? That is what faith is all about, Father Tommaso replied. Everything happens for the best reasons, reasons that we know little about. Believing in the best is believing in God's goodness. Your mama had great faith. But the best doesn't always happen, Dominic blurted out. Everyone turned to look at him and, felt, and he felt his cheeks burning with embarrassment at the sudden attention. Yes, this is true. Good things don't always happen, Father Tommaso nodded. He gently lay Antonio down. Then he walked over to the little crooked window on the far wall. He held back the frayed bit of curtain that hung over the frame. Dominic took a deep breath as the faint scent of lemons blew into the loft on the night's breeze. Look at those distant hills in the moonlight, the priest sighed. Our whole world, our life, is very much like that little patch of hillside you boys have lived on. There are beautiful flowers and olives and lemons, but there are bad things too. Weeds that choke the flowers, worms that infest the fruit, good and bad side by side. Flowers blooming and fading, leaves twirling up to the sun, and fruit rotting on the vine. It goes on and on, changing all the time. One day you will be able to look at everything and discover strength and goodness in the most difficult of changes. For it is the hardships we meet in life that make us strong, and it is our strength that makes us who we are. Oh, poor child, he is gone, he is gone! The woman's cries could be heard from below, causing Antonio to bury his head back under the quilt. Again, Dominic fought the tears that were coming to his eyes. Now you had better get some rest, whispered Father Tommaso. You will need all your strength for the trip. As Dominic lay bes down beside Antonio, Father Tommaso walked over to Francesco. The two of them stood by the moonlit window where they whispered until the priest turned down the lantern and sent him to bed with the other boys. The sky is full tonight, Father Tommaso said. Dominic turned to look. Father's Tom Father Tommaso's back was to him. His bald head gleamed in the moonlight, and beyond the little crooked window frame, the twinkling of starlight spiraled through the velvety blackness of the night. K-1
Carrying the unlit lantern in his hand, Father Tomasa made his way down the ladder. As Dominic lay beside the boys in darkness, he brought his arms across his chest and gently rocked himself back and forth, waiting for the hurt to go away. Dominic, Francesco whispered in the darkness, I promised I would return your kindness the day you took the whip for Antonio, and I meant it. I want you to take Salvatore's ticket and come with us to America. I know he would have wanted it this way. Will you come with us? Again, the words from of the old man in the museum came back to him. Open your heart, little one, and all that you need will be yours. Dominic thought about how he had opened his heart and how much he had cared about Salvatore, only to find himself hurting now that he was gone. His worst fears has been have been realized. If he really cared about someone, he would surely lose him. But now that he had opened his heart, he didn't know how to close it. Dominic's eyes filled with tears as this answer came easily. Yes, he whispered, his voice choked by a sob. I'd like that. I'd like that a lot. The boys lay silently in the dark, and the only sound that broke the silence was a stifled cry from Francesco as he buried his face in Violetta's soft white fur.